Greetings, and welcome to another How To R video. In this video, I'll show you how to do interaction analysis in regression using the inner plots package for R. Let's jump right in. Um, the first thing you want to do is install the inner plot package. You can do that by using the install option here um, and, and searching for it, or you can use install.packages inner plot. Oops, install.packages. And then of course, load inner plot. When people install and load packages, typically, uh, if they get an error, could not find function, and then whatever the, you know, whatever you're trying to do, uh, usually you've either um, misspelled the name of the function, or you don't have the package um, installed or loaded. And so you can always check this is inner plot. This is the package that we want to use, and the little white box next to it is checked. So we know that it should say okay. Uh, you can run your inner plot functions now. So uh, now we just run a regression equation with the um, interaction that we want to test. Um, and so we'll do model one is uh, LM. And we're going to, again, look to um, explain how people feel toward Donald Trump. So this is Donald Trump's feeling thermometer. And we'll use um, party seven and ideology. So this is from strong Democrat to strong Republican, one to seven. And this is um, extremely liberal to extremely conservative, also one to seven. And the data is the American National Election Studies data from 2020. And, and then if we look for the summary of model one, we'll see that, um, yes, both party and ideology are associated with um, evaluations of Donald Trump, no surprise, as you move up that partisanship scale from strong Democrat to strong Republican, your evaluations of Donald Trump go up uh, about 10 points per uh, one unit on that seven point scale. And as you move from extremely liberal to extremely conservative, uh, evaluations of Trump also go up about seven points. But our suspicion is that um, the effects interact such that uh, strong Republicans will um, like Donald Trump more than, I, I'm sorry, conservative Republicans will like Donald Trump more than uh, liberal Republicans, and that liberal Democrats will dislike him more than conservative Democrats. So we expect that there will be an interaction between partisanship and ideology. And again, to test that, it's as simple as changing the plus into a multiply, um, or you can do, you know, plus and then add the interaction term. Those uh, are interpreted uh, as equivalent by R, and you know maybe you find this um, a little easier from the perspective of you know you have all three of your variables in there. It doesn't really matter. Okay, so uh, we run it that way, and we see that yes, in fact, there is a statistically significant interaction we can compare and see that the R square for the first model is 60, uh, 0.6882, and the R square for the second model is 0.6952. So you see a nice improvement, if modest. Um, now, that's just how you do you know, the interaction. You know, this suggests that the effect of partisanship um, becomes stronger by one point for every one unit increase in ideology. Um, so conservative Republicans probably do like Trump more than liberal Republicans, but typically with an interaction, we want to visualize the effect. And that's where the inner plot package comes in handy. So the command we want is inner plot. Um, and then, so this is the name of the function. And if you get cannot find function inner plot, it suggests this either isn't installed and loaded or you spelled it wrong. And I do that all the time. Uh, and then M equals, so you want to tell it the model that you want to test. And so the name of our model that has the interaction is model two. So we'll type that since that's the name of our model. And then var one for variable one, and this is the independent variable. 
So our independent variable is party seven, and be sure you use the quote marks, then comma ver2, oops, ver2 equals ideology. And so this is the name of our moderating variable, and the moderator is ver2. And interplot can ha handle um, moderated moderation, and so you could have ver3 here if appropriate, but this is all you really need to type. It's as simple as that. The name of the function, tell it which model, and this is the model that we're looking at. Tell it the name of the independent variable, and tell it the name of the moderator. And this is because up here in this model, you could have a lot of different statistical covariates or independent variables, or even multiple interactions, and you need to tell it uh, which variables you want it to plot. So you run that, and you get this uh, lovely graph that shows, um, Oh, what's going on with the, oh yeah. Um, so the y-axis is the size of the effect and the x-axis is levels of the moderator. And so you see it starts at one and goes up to seven because this is extremely liberal to extremely conservative. And this suggests that you know the effect of one unit increase on partisanship uh, for people who are extremely liberal is meh, about seven uh, points, so about seven points on that feeling thermometer. But when you go up to becoming only somewhat liberal, uh, the effect of becoming more Republican is about eight points. And you see for um, extremely conservative people, the effect of moving up that partisanship scale becomes, you know, approximately 13 points. So the effect moves from about seven points to about 13 points as you go from being extremely liberal to extremely conservative. Now, um, there are things you can do to make this uh, plot look nicer. So if you add a plus sign, and I should say that this uses, interplot uses ggplot2. So a lot of this is uh, will be familiar for people who have done anything in ggplot2. But one thing you might want to do is uh, give the plot a title. So you would use gg title, and then type what you want to name it. So we'll call this estimated effect of partisanship on Trump feeling thermometer. That'll be our title. Um, and yeah, so if you run it that way, you'll see that it puts the title that we just uh, wrote at the top of the plot. Um, you can do the same thing to get a label for the x-axis, and that is x lab, so that's x label, and then we'll call this um, ideology, comma liberal to conservative, and you see it put that label down at the bottom of the x-axis. We can similarly label the y-axis. Remember the y-axis is the um, estimated effect um, at different levels of the x-axis. And so we wanna call this estimated effect of partisanship. Um, so if we run that, you'll see now it's given us um, an x label and a y label. Um, now, another thing that folks might like to do is put a dotted line at zero because zero represents the null hypothesis. So when the effect uh, crosses the zero point, that's when it's not statistically significant. Obviously, this effect is entirely above zero, so partisanship always influences evaluations of Trump, which is no surprise. But it could be useful to have the... Um, the a line indicating zero so that readers can say, all right, at what point would this effect be no longer statistically significant? Um, and this gray shaded area is on uh, around the line is the 95% confidence interval. So if that gray shading around the line crosses zero, that is when you would say, ah, the effect is not statistically significant at these levels of the moderator. So you can get that line by typing geome H line y intercept equals zero, and that will draw a line at zero, um, just a straight line. So H line is horizontal line, 
And uh, y-intercept is where do you want the horizontal line to cross the y-axis? And so we say y-intercept equals zero because we want the line to represent the null hypothesis. And then we can do line type equals dashed, and it will draw a dashed line for us. And so now you see this is the null hypothesis. Partisanship would have a zero effect where this line, where the solid line crosses the dotted line, as you can see, the solid line is well above the dotted line. Um, and then um, we can also change the theme. So we can say uh, theme underscore BW, and this BW theme is just in ggplot2. And I think this looks a little bit nicer. It's a little more manuscript ready, in my opinion. So I always use uh, theme underscore bw. There's also somebody out there who's written some syntax that you can run to add an APA theme so that you can just do uh, APA ready figures. But um, I don't have that in here right now. So you'll just have to Google it. Um, so that pretty much gets you a manuscript ready figure uh, depicting the nature of the effect of the independent variable at different levels of the moderator, which is a really helpful way to understand uh, the nature of moderation. Now, there are a couple of other options that we have here. One is we could do um, histogram HIST equals T. And this will put a histogram of the moderator at the bottom of the graph. Uh, I, I don't think it puts it at zero. I think it puts it at um, the lowest uh, point of the effect. And so I think that the histogram will actually be kind of um, up in the middle of the graph. Let's look. Uh, so I don't love that. But there may be a way to move it for people who are a little savvier with ggplot than I am. Um, but yeah, you see this puts, uh, th this indicates uh, a histogram of the distribution of ideology. And so you see there's a handful of people that are uh, extremely liberal, a handful of people, you know, that are moderate, a handful of people that are conservative. Um, and so that can be helpful, though I don't think it looks nice in this instance because um, the effect is so far above zero and then it just drops the histogram right around five. So I don't love that. Another option that you have is to put point equals true. And so here, instead of drawing a line, it will give you a dot for each level of the effect. And so you see uh, liberal to conservative goes from one to seven, and we have a dot estimating the nature of the effect at each um, point for ideology. This can be especially helpful if your moderator is um, like a dichotomous variable. So if your moderator is, um, you know, like a dummy variable for race, where you want a dot for white and a dot for not white, or you could have, um, you know, a, a dummy variable for an experimental treatment, received the treatment, didn't receive the treatment, and it would show you the effect of the independent variable at, you know, each level of that. Here it also works great because, you know, ideology is on a one to seven scale. Um, and so, you know, you don't have, where, where you wouldn't love this is if you had so many, um, levels of the moderator, if the moderator was continuous and there was like 1.2, 1.3, 1.75, um, then you would have a lot of dots and it might not look as visually pleasant. But I think here this works, even though I probably like um, the original version of the scale better. So uh, that is um, how you can use interplot to visually depict interaction analysis uh, for R. I love those plots. Um, the interplot package is why I decided to shift my class from SPSS to R. I'd been wanting to do it for a long time for a variety of reasons. And when I started using that package, I thought this is just uh, far too useful to not share with my students. And so they're learning R from now on. So hopefully you uh, are as enthusiastic about it as I am. Um, hopefully you enjoy using it and hopefully you found this video helpful. Thanks for watching all the way to the end.